Brian, you've had such a busy day. I recognize that background where you're at. <laughs> it sounds, looks like you're at a, in a very important building right now uh, down in Raleigh, North Carolina. But we have a lot to talk about when it comes down to potential realignment and things like that. Um, I'll just read the headline from uh, Sports Illustrated earlier today. Quote, the next wave is coming, expansion realignment, and what's at stake for Power 5 conferences. And Brett McMurphy – uh, he's the one who put out earlier today about the uh, about the Magnificent Seven. Clemson, Florida State, Miami, UNC, NC State, Virginia, and Virginia Tech are looking at uh, how they can examine the grant of rights to see how unbreakable it really is. Um, what can you put in context for us as far as what's happening right now and how it deals with some of the ACC meetings right now in uh, at Amelia Island? Yeah, we thought that the meetings were going to be about revenue sharing, and, and yeah. I think they will be ultimately about this unequal revenue distribution to keep Clemson and Florida State, and North Carolina and Miami happy. Um, but they're never going to be happy until they're in one of the power two leagues at this point, because the revenue is just so different. We're talking 30, 40 million dollars difference in, yeah. in revenue between the Big Ten and the ACC eventually. And, and those are the schools that are coveted by the SEC and the Big Ten. I mean, we hear a lot of expansion talk out to the Pacific Northwest, but I think getting into North Carolina, getting into Virginia, getting into Florida for the Big Ten is where is where those leagues want to go. And so the, not, not unexpectedly, those seven schools are like, how do we get out of this grant of rights? For those unfamiliar with the grant of rights, it runs through 2036. Most people think it's pretty ironclad and it's going to keep the ACC together through then, but – if you have at least seven members looking to get out of the grant of rights, mm-hmm. s- suddenly that becomes a little a little flimsier. And, Brian, we're talking about football here. Brian Murphy, WRL Sports Investigative Journalist. If I'm Clemson and I've won two national championships in the last ten years and I'm looking over at Northwestern in the Big Ten and they could possibly be making more money than what we're making on an annual basis, and you said it, 35 to $40 million, like, you know, how quick am I trying to move on this? Yeah, well, they, they would move yesterday. I mean, that's the thing about the unequal revenue distribution is like Clemson and Florida State aren't going to be happy if, if Wake Forest and Duke and Boston College suddenly say, OK, you can have an extra $10 million a year. They're still going to jump out of the league the first chance they get. The first chance they get to get out of the mm-hmm. league, the first invitation that comes from the SEC mm-hmm. or the Big Ten, they're out of there. I mean, I think we're, we're seeing this separation in college athletics between the Power Two and everybody else. And there's only a few more seats left in the Power Two. I think those seven schools you mentioned are among the most desirable ones. And they're saying, hey, let's speed this process up. Brian Murphy, WREL Sports Investigative Reporter, joining us here on the Keith Automotive Group Hotline. Is this possibly a way for the schools in the ACC? Because not everyone is going to be able to go to a, a either the Big Ten or the SEC. Because, again, those schools have to invite you in. There's a, It's a two-way street. You can't just sit there and say, oh, I'm going to just go to this other conference. Is this possibly a way for the ACC and these schools to approach Disney, ESPN, and say, hey, look, we have an opportunity to get out of this and leave. Is there a chance that we could renegotiate our deal, get more money, or change the structure of how our te- television revenue is generated? Is is that possibly, possibly a way for the ACC to gain more money out of their current TV deal? Yeah, I mean, I think certainly they would love to put pressure on Disney and ESPN and say, hey, we need more money. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ESPN's like, we got a great deal with you guys. We've yeah. got some of the best best names in college athletics, and we don't have to pay the going rate for it. Um, one underrated aspect of this is that the AC, that the ESPN's been cut out of the Big Ten package. So they, they have no Big Ten games. So mm-hmm. We're talking Ohio State, Michigan, mm-hmm. Penn State. They, don't, they have no rights to any of those games. If they were to somehow, if the Big Ten were to somehow expand with three or four schools, ESPN could purchase a, an additional television package with the Big Ten oh. and thus find its way back into broadcasting Big Ten games. There would be more inventory available. Um, is ESPN certainly going through cost cutting right now? And, and do they want to pay more money for the ACC? Would they rather just pay some additional money to the Big Ten? Would they rather grab those schools in the SEC? But if you're already paying, if you're paying Clemson, say fifty million dollars, why do you want to pay him eighty million dollars in the SEC? True. Brian Murphy, sports investigative reporter for WRALSportsFan.com. Here's the the name that was a glaring omission for me between Clemson, Florida State, Miami, UNC, NC State, Virginia, Virginia Tech. 
Duke isn't there. And Duke football mm. is, of course, not going to be on the same playing field as, as these teams. Nope. But when we talk about Duke, the power is in basketball. Mm-hmm. So it also made me wonder, Brian, uh, just get your opinion on this. Do you think that this is a possibility of a play for Duke either to either stay put, to go elsewhere, or maybe even to consider – going independent for men's basketball, sort of like Notre Dame has done, where they can probably generate their own money uh, for men's basketball uh, if if other teams decide to leave the ACC and leave them high and dry. But this stands, you know, this reporting has been, been corroborated by others, but what it says to me is that the football schools are banding together, that the, foot, the, the schools are looking out for football and basketball is secondary. Um I don't know what Duke would do. I mean, they could join the Big East, which is obviously a, a powerhouse. Mm. If, if this, if something like where the, this were to happen, and I think we're years away from something like this happening, but I can see the Big Twelve grabbing Pitt, Syracuse, Duke, mm. Louisville, and creating an Eastern wing. That would be an awesome, and maybe even a UConn. That would be an incredible basketball league. You're talking Kansas, Duke, yeah. UConn, Baylor, Houston, um, you know, Syracuse. Yeah. So. I do think there would be some moves for a school like Duke to make. If I'm Boston College, if I'm Wake Forest and I'm, I'm reading these reports, I am terrified. I don't know where their landing spots are. Maybe maybe back to the Big East for Boston College, but then that leaves your football program with nowhere to go. Brian Murphy, WREL Sports Investigative Reporter, joining us here on the Keystone Automotive Group Hotline. My, my final question for you is this. Um, is the ACC eventually just going to be done? I, I don't know if the ACC as an entity will be done, but, but you know, and, and people have said this for a long time, that the ACC as we knew it is already done. True. Uh, but if you lose, if you lose, just say, uh, say four of those teams, if you lose Florida State, Clemson, North Carolina, and Virginia, that, the ACC is done. Yeah. That, you know, the ACC as we know it is done. I mean, Clemson and North Carolina and North Carolina State are the char- are charter members of the ACC. Virginia came a couple weeks, a couple months later. And now they're part of a group of seven that's looking to, to somehow get out of this grant of rights. Mm-hmm. I mean, if nothing else, this shows you that it's, it's every man for himself in college athletics right now. All right, Brian Murphy joining us. Thank you so much. I know you've had a busy day. Uh, yep. We'll be following uh, some of what you're going to be writing on this and other things that are happening in the state of North Carolina. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Thanks, guys.